Hey everyone, welcome back to a whole new session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha and in this session, you'll be learning about the Angular learning path. So let's take a quick look at what's in store for you guys. We shall first begin by understanding what is Angular and the prerequisites to learn Angular. Then we shall take a look at the Angular architecture, the building blocks of Angular, and finally, we'll be talking about learning through creating projects. So before we begin, just make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the latest Edureka videos. Also, if you are interested in getting an online training certification in Angular, check out the link given in the description box below. So without any further delays, let's move on. So what exactly is Angular? Angular is an open source web application that is maintained by Google. It is based on TypeScript, which is also an open source programming language developed by Microsoft. TypeScript is basically the superset of JavaScript. With TypeScript, Angular introduced an object-oriented programming paradigm in web development. Angular is widely used by many companies to create websites. Some of them are Google, Microsoft, Samsung, VMware, Santander, etc. Now, there are many reasons why Angular is considered to be one of the best front-end frameworks. Some of them are as follows. Ease of use. Angular allows its users to create full-fledged professional websites with much lesser code when compared to its rivals. The MVC architecture. The Angular framework is based on the MVC architecture or the model view controller architecture. Here, the models serve as the base and contain all the data and the views basically deal with what the user sees. Compatibility. Angular works on client side, which makes it compatible for both desktops and mobile applications. Provides filters. Angular provides filters to filter out different types of data, such as numbers, lowercase and uppercase letters, etc. Not just that, you can also design your own filters according to your requirements. Two-way data binding. Angular allows two-way data binding, which means if any changes are made to the models, the corresponding views also get updated accordingly. Modularity. This is one of the biggest reasons for Angular's popularity. Developers can make use of different modules to create SPS or single page applications. Testing abilities. Angular provides easy and simple testing as a result of its module separation feature flexible and extensible. Angular is very accommodating when it comes to integrating with existing technology stack. As a JavaScript client-side tool, it can be used with any server-side technology that is in use. It also gets along with other client-side technologies and can be customized in such a way that it is not interfering with the existing setup. Okay, so now moving on towards the prerequisites. As an Angular developer, you should have sound knowledge of JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML, and CSS. TypeScript is basically the superset of JavaScript as I've already mentioned before. The TypeScript programming language is designed for the development of large applications. However, it needs to be transpiled to JavaScript as the browsers understand JavaScript only. This process of converting TypeScript to JavaScript is called as transpilation. So now that you've understood what is Angular and what are the prerequisites, the next very important thing that you should know is the Angular architecture. The Angular framework makes use of the MVVM architecture or the model view view model architecture. This basically contains three things that is the model, the view and the view model. The controller is actually replaced by the view model in the MVVM design pattern. View model is nothing but a JavaScript function, which is like the controller itself and is responsible for maintaining a relationship between the view and the model. The difference here is if we update anything in the views, it gets updated in the models as well. Similarly, when you make changes to the models, it shows up in the views as well. This is called as two-way data binding. So the next topic in the Angular learning path is the building blocks of Angular. The building blocks of Angular are models, components, templates, metadata, directives, data binding, services, and dependency injection. Modules. A module basically allows you to separate the functionality of your program into different parts. These parts are independent of each other which means each module's outputs are completely separate from the other. If you make changes to any of these, the change will be made only to that module and will not interfere with that of the others. In Angular, modules will allow you to group together the other building blocks such as components, directives, pipes, and services, etc. Angular modules are referred to as ng modules. Components. Angular components are the most basic UI for your application and they are always associated with the template and are a subset of directives. The components logic is defined inside a class. This basically determines how it supports the view. 
components are created, updated, and deleted by Angular as and how you proceed with your application. Templates. Templates are nothing but views. They are very much like HTML, but they have Angular template syntax. In Angular, component can be a controller or a view model. On the other hand, templates represent the views. Metadata. Metadata tells Angular how to process a class. To tell Angular that some particular component is a component, metadata is attached to the class. In TypeScript, you attach metadata by using a decorator. Directives. Angular directives are basically functions that are executed whenever they are discovered on the DOM by the Angular compiler. These directives empower the application's HTML through an advanced syntax. They have distinct names that can either be predefined by Angular or custom names defined by the user itself. Data binding. Data binding is the mechanism that binds the application's UI or the user interface to the modules. Using data binding, the user will be able to manipulate the elements present in the website using the browser. In Angular, data binding defines the interaction between the components and the DOM. Services. Services in Angular can be anything such as values, functions, or features that are required by the Angular application. Service classes have a narrow and well-defined purpose. Components can delegate tasks to services. These services can perform any task like returning the output, fetching data from some given URL, checking the validity of the user input, etc. Any injectable service class can be configured to do any of these tasks for any component in your application. Not just this, your application can also be made more versatile by injecting distinct providers of similar kind of service. Dependency injection. Dependency injection is a vital application design pattern in Angular. In this coding pattern, classes are injected with the required dependencies rather than hard coding them within the class itself. These dependencies are usually objects or services that are required by the component class. So once you've understood all of these concepts, the next thing that you'll have to do is create projects. This is one of the most important steps you must do. Creating projects will allow you to have a 360 degree learning. This is because when you create a project, you will have to do everything right from the beginning, that is the problem analysis to testing. You will make use of all programming concepts, paradigms, syntaxes, etc. Remember that you do not have to master the world in your first project itself. So start off by choosing a very simple project, complete it by yourself, and try your best not to copy paste anything from elsewhere. As you proceed, you can take up bigger projects and work on them. It is sure that you will face difficulties while making projects, but it comes with the reward of learning. If you are stuck somewhere at some point, try to break down the problem into minor parts and then work on each part at a time. So this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more exciting sessions, but till then, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!